Today's dish combines two extremely iconic Asian dishes. One is the Singapore Laksa and the other one is the Korean Kimchi Ramen. My name is Jeremy Nui. I'm a chef in Singapore and I'm extremely passionate about heritage Asian cuisine. Today, we're going to show you a dish in collaboration with Sethly.com. To really make it easy for you, we're going to be using your favourite laksa and we're going to be mashing this together with the Korean ramen. You can choose any flavours that you like and we're going to be jazzing up the noodles with fresh prawns, clams and mussels. We're going to be making a soft centre egg as well and like topping it all off with like even more kimchi. We're going to be adding some kimchi into the soup. This really boosts the kimchi flavour of the stock. And I'm cutting it out really finely as uh, this helps us to melt the kimchi more easily into the stock. And we have the laksa paste here from the packet. Add this into one litre of water. And this uh, laksa instant noodle comes with like a packet of like coconut milk cream. I really like that. The coconut cream makes it super rich and uh, really tasty. And we're going to be adding the kimchi soup stock next. The kimchi soup actually provides like a really light and uh, tangy flavour. And this really helps to cut through the richness of like the coconut milk and the very very rich laksa. And lastly, I just added kimchi. Fresh chopped kimchi into the soup stock. I'm going to bring this to a low simmer now before we add the noodles. Soup stock spotting now. Wow. So the flavour is really, really rich and enticing. I wish you could smell this. So the coconut cream makes the soup really nice and thick and the kimchi flavours just cut through that richness and provides us a little bit of balance and sour notes as we eat it. So I really like this combination. I know it's a little bit funky, it sounds like it, but trust me, it's really, really delicious and I hope you'll try it. So right now, the stock is coming to a simmer and I'm just going to be add the noodles inside. So I've added the two instant noodles together. So just in case that the manufacturer instructions have like two different cooking timings, don't worry so much about it. We're just going to eyeball it and you're just going to cook it to your favourite dumbness. So the noodles have been simmering inside for 5-6 minutes. I'm just going to check it. And I think this is the perfect dandas for me. I like my noodles a little bit al dente. So to make sure that it doesn't overcook, I'm actually going to take the noodles out. And this makes it easier to uh, plate up later when we add the seafood on top. I know that the normal way that you make instant noodles is to just put everything together and just cook it all up. But the reason why we are cooking everything separately is so that we can ensure perfect dandas for every single ingredient. So right now, I'm going to be cooking the seafood. We have the clams and mussels. I'm going to gently put this in. And I'm going to add the fresh prawns as well. I love using fresh seafood because this adds some sweetness to the stock as well. And we're going to gently poach this. In the moment, the mussels and the clams pop open and the prawns are done. We're going to fish it out and we're going to reserve that later as we heat up the soup again and start to assemble our dish. So I've added the clams and the mussels together with the prawns. We're going to push this gently for just about a minute. It's not going to take too long. I think the seafood is just about done. And the clams have opened up as well, so we're going to make sure we get every single one out. Now the clams are up, we're going to keep the soup warm for later. So now we're going to be making the soft centre eggs. And to do that, we bring a pot of water to boil. I add a little bit of salt. This helps with the cooking of the eggs and makes it easier for the shell to be separated. So when you lower the eggs, be sure to do this really gently. You don't want to drop it inside, otherwise the shells will crack. And you also don't want the water to be too hot and rapidly boiling, because this really just knocks the eggs together and it will actually crack the eggshells. So once you lower all the eggs in, you just want to give it a little swirl so all the eggs are swimming around inside. And what this does is that it helps the eggs uh, to cook 
with the yolks directly in the center. Hey we, Siri, set another timer for 6 minutes. Okay, 6 minutes and counting. Okay, 6 minutes is up. And I've prepared an ice bath. I'm gonna make sure that the eggs are completely and thoroughly cooked before we cook them. So make sure that they are in the ice bath for just as long as the time that you cook them. So I'm gonna be leaving them inside here for like 5 to 6 minutes. So right now, we're gonna be plating up the dish. We have our perfectly cooked noodles, they are not too soggy. We're using fresh seafood here because it's uh, very common to eat laksa with big prawns and of course kimchi ramen. It's not complete without fresh seafood like uh, clams and mussels. But if you want to, you could very easily eat it with uh, chicken, like lots of vegetables. So just be creative, add all the ingredients that you like and uh, you don't have to stick to any of these shellfish if you're allergic or if you really don't like the flavour. Let's go have a little bit more kimchi. Beautiful and sour flavour. And now, the star of this dish is our kimchi laksa broth. So traditional laksa is rich, very coconutty, and the kimchi is like tangy, it's light, it's sourish. So what you get is a spiced coconutty broth that has a beautiful flavour and it's really just Nice and balanced. And now to finish the dish, we have our soft center egg. Beautiful, glossy, not overcooked, not too runny. And it's just nice for laksa. So there you have it, our kimchi laksa. As you can see, it's really, really simple to make such beautiful flavors as well. We have the iconic and rich Singapore laksa with its like coconutty, creamy and spicy flavors. And we have the Korean kimchi that is tangy, it's a little bit sour really just helps us to cut through the heaviness and in the end you have such a wonderful and beautiful and delicious bowl. It's really simple to make and I hope that you'll try it at home.